Hey, how's it going YouTube? Thank you so much for joining me here at Mystic Ashram, soon to be Astral Ashram, uh, soon to be something something. Anyway, voice your comments about the title below. Um, anyway, uh, this is going to be a full playthrough with my mods, which I'm going to be doing as a series. Um, and if you uh, don't have anything nice to say, then keep it to yourself. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, I hope to get involved more with Steam, and I hope to eventually produce videos which are um, way more along the lines of some of the modder community videos, which I see. Um, modders tend to drink a lot of coffee. And so this is going to be a pretty chill uh, playthrough. And anyway, so let's get on with it, shall we? Because we're a minute 15 into this. And I will be breaking these playthroughs up, hopefully, into 30 minute sections. Um, and uh, some minimal editing, perhaps or fast forwarding anyway hopefully minimal editing so without further ado what kind of mods do we have loaded we have of course a, a spell blade character going on so and at the moment the mod community is not letting me in we'll see if it lets us in so we can see my mods easier. One of the nice things about Skyrim and probably why Skyrim Special Edition, um, which is actually Elder Scrolls V, why it's, it's so um, playable, it's because it doesn't require anything online uh, except for downloading your mods here. Ooh, Moon and Star, that's a new one. But our, our download limit is totally reached at the moment, but it's a cool quest, so we'll come back. Anyway, as you can see, I've got like 420 gigabyte that's loaded, and free space is about 820 megabytes, which um, it won't let me download more than 150 um, at a time and so uh, I think I capped that yes I've capped that so despite the fact that some of these are kind of small um, what we have look here I actually have 150 of them okay uh, what we have here is the unofficial Skyrim patch, which is uh, called USSEP um, for short, and uh, it's pretty much a fixes the bugs on the general game. This increases the game's stability. Um, pretty nice. Uh, this is the graphics pack. It won't let me download assets one at the moment. I don't know why. It's not a size issue. It just doesn't want me to have that one. Um, there are some add-ons, which at the moment I'm lacking, such as uh, um, all of those listed, uh, except for High Hrothgar and the SMIM performance. However, I could fool around with landscape and dungeons as well as Winterhold and Snow Elves. Um, and uh, those would be good to get at some point and add them to these. But I've been very happy with the quality of the graphics. It's not too photorealistic. But on the other hand, uh, the other side of the scale, it's also not very cartoonish, which I appreciate. Um, here's an interior lighting and effects package some lush trees 
and the dynamic camera. This 60 FPS interface, uh, it helps with uh, the amount of crashes and the game running smoothly. Uh, immersive movement allows for more smooth skeletal function on your character's frame. Uh, body morphography. Um, here's a quality world map, which is vivid, with stone roads, so, so that we can see the uh, road map in satellite perspective. Here are some pastel map markers, car maps, so it's easier for me to see them, otherwise they're white and blend in. Uh, <clears throat> we have, pardon me, we have surreal lighting, which uh, doesn't fool around with a bunch of stuff, uh, except outdoors, it makes it a little cheerier and surreal, um, dreamlike. So here's better skies, which adds the green aurora borealis effect um, in the evenings and other skies. Here's unique handmade signs, and I can appreciate some good artwork on some signs and make some colorful so that you can read them and know what they're about. Individualizes all of the signs for all of the pubs. There's the lock picking interface redone, which smooths out the lock picking mechanism and makes it look prettier as well. Uh, the Sacagawea doll dollars. Uh, my favorite coin in US currency is the Sacagawea dollar. It's a woman and baby, and you can switch your loot to various coinage. I chose her and her child. Um, now the, the uh, coordinator package, for those of you who are curious about who Sacagawea is, she is um, the woman who went with Lewis and Clark with her child strapped to her back across to the Western, in the Western Expedition, one of the first to, for cartography of the Western United States. On to Ordinator, Perks of Skyrim allows me to cast more spells. Also, more artifacts um, is a patch uh, this one to tie in awesome artifacts with my ordinator patch so they work together and awesome artifacts add some cool weapons apocalypse the magic of skyrim adds more um, enchanting spells and cool custom effects animations things like that summer mist enchantments of skyrim Gives you 120 new enchantments for your stuff, weapons, and armor, and clothing, and jewelry. So Andromeda, the unique standing stones, they give you two perks every time you touch a standing stone. Summer Mist enchantment chests stick some miniature chests by the sorcerer in uh, High Hrothgar, or palace, the palace, not High Hrothgar, um, the palace at Whiterun, so that you can level up on your enchantments quicker. Also includes things like gemstones and scrolls. Um, improved spells allows you to use the spells as powers, so they don't level downward as you use them. The Archery Tweaks Plus um, well, uh, it gives you, uh, stuff to help you with your archery and helps you, uh, uh, improve your speed and gives you things like, uh, this one gives you a patch for Ordinator's Trick Arrows. These arrows really explode and make pretty lights and do, you can craft them through magical ingredients and means and stuff like that. It's kind of neat. Better Bows Integrated is um, uh, really good for um, 
allowing you to enjoy more powerful bows you can purchase through the game. Um, more variety of bows. Epic glowing arrows. Uh, fashion cool lighted arrows that explode and do cool stuff. Poison arrow crafting allows you to use your alchemy skills in creating arrows. Um, then you have Skyrim Outfitters Heavy Metal Edition, which allow you to uh, create cool uh, armor, and um, these are kind of distributed both to characters as well as you can make it, as well as um, find it in the game. Uh, the Skyrim Outfitters Vistorium Magus Edition, so cool wizard robes. Uh, the adventurer's gear through them, so cool light armor, Skyrim attire, king ports, is, uh, makes a lot of mods, and I especially appreciate their interesting gowns here, uh, which is located in the uh, temple at Ripton. Um, so you can find some beautiful female gowns. Um, the Less Moored Rose uh, Vampire Armor. So that's that's kind of a fun gothic Victorian pastel. It's got it all going on. I, it's it's got tight pants. It's got a bustier. It's it's got a veil. It's it's confused about its identity, but it's also comfortable at the same time with its identity and. That identity is very alternative. Um, anyway, so we have velvet robes and cloaks. And so that's really cool. Finally gives you something to do with a lame fine hats and fine robes you can find and fine boots. You can turn it into cool velvet things. Um, better dressed NPCs version two. This kind of doles out. Everybody gets new clothes in the game, so it's wardrobe. The Royal Armory, just make sure that all of your dudes in the game uh, have a hierarchy in terms of what weapons they possess, uh, basically. It makes their weapons distinctive for their character. The Lavender Menace Necklace um, is one of the few things in the game to that and the only one I know of on Xbox One platform, which allows you to signify as well as change the NPC's preference for um, gay uh, solicitations or by solicitations or that kind of thing. Otherwise, the uh, girls in the game tend to um, talk about. Uh, men and and women a lot and their former relationships and a bunch of stuff and this necklace really improves the dialogue let's just put it that way um from a, a certain kind of like out of the box thinking female point of view it, it really improves the dialogue um of a lot of NBCs if you really don't appreciate the whole uh, undertone of misogyny that runs through the game. This Lavender Menace necklace will take care of it. And all you need is some quarried stone, some straw, and I, I don't know, the, some other crap. Um, and, and voila, you have <clears throat> some decent female conversation. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the Femikins... Uh, if you're female playing this or you play female characters, you should just get femikins and um, you will no longer have man male mannequins in the game. But on the other hand, there's a lot of advantages to femikins. Um, Wa ribbons, king port, um, which allow you to have ribbons in your hair. And I know that there's a whole mod that combines a lot of these Nihon Rim things, but these are actually very small uh, by themselves. So at the moment, I have three of them 
taking up this space, um, which if I had the combination mod, it'd be like 450 megabytes. Um, just too complicated. So you have to make these kimonos and umbrellas and things, but they're pretty cool and you can enchant them and it makes your game very Japanese flavored. So here's a samurai mod for armor. So you can have a choice of samurai armor. Here's some cloaks and capes with fur right on. So you have something to do when you come across all this fur, except for, you know, besides like sell it, you can make these cool cloaks and they look really nice on some of the NPCs. Um, the CN accessories adds more jewelry and I especially like the little mini bug jars. This, uh, these are more headpieces. These are natural headpieces, which I believe you can uh, craft as far as I know. So, um, I did that. Oh, there they are. They can be found in a small satchel behind the night gate in. So, we'll have to go there. Um, the jewelry of power, you can definitely craft this very helpful for weight limits so you don't have to worry about like struggling through slow periods where you're weighted down at all here's the awesome artifacts and it gives you lots and lots of neat stuff uh the cheese for your skyrim burger which makes me hungry for burgers somebody bring me a cheeseburger please all right um Here's a unique uniques, uh, more, more cool weapons. We'll see which ones show up. Dressed hearth fire doll, because all the dolls are naked in the game. You can have a blonde doll or a brunette doll, and I can't find the blonde one. Otherwise I'd have both, so that they're kind of mixed up. But anyway, um, the, the doll needs some variety. I mean, you could have, you know, different shades of dolls in this game but anyway at least this one has clothes otherwise they look really kind of scary without their little clothes with their little vacant eyes i feel so bad for them so they have clothes here's the langley rugs it, it really nice oriental rugs in the game i really appreciate it bling boxes this adds a lot of really cool uh, little behind guardian stones there's some cool little uh, treasure chests that you can find and they respawn so you can constantly have some gold to work with without working too hard or even having to make it at the forge um, the gemstone collector I really like this one it adds a bunch of very rare gemology rocks and stuff and it does have some additional larger versions that really expand it but i'm so happy with the size of 157 megabytes for adding all these new rocks to find all over the game it's so delightful and it improves collecting here is the extra expert spells and staves, and this gives you a nice little modest collection to find by Helgen. Um, here is uh, the gifts of Akatosh, so another nice little collection right there by Riverwood to find. The Zodiac Overhaul, enough can't be said about this cool little collection, and it spawns at almost all of your player homes. And it's already pre-organized and all kinds of cool things. You get one each of a bunch of stuff and to start you off with. And they're all super duper cool little items. And uh, spells and books and jewelry and all kinds of stuff to start off with. I, am, I like it a lot. Here's the chest filled with ingots and hearthstones. If you're working with staffs and you're a mage, you need some hearthstones. And... That guarantees you'll be able to find some, as well as building materials, that straw and stone you need for that one necklace, and give that necklace to yourself, 
as well as make multiples for all your NPCs, you'll be very happy. Um, so here's the elder staff. Here's um, so we're we're bringing a little bit of lore friendly stuff from other games besides Skyrim, but it really improves the variety of staffs available to us. So that's fine, and they're all located in different places to find. So here's the another staff pack. So that'll be cool. And uh, a neat enhanced staff we can find. Now the improved closed faced helmets allow people to wear their helmets, but you can still see their eyes and it's easier to see what they're communicating sometimes that way. Here's the golden egg treasure hunt. Um, and this adds like 200 amazing like little eggs all over the game to find and collect. And they're adorable. And they're all different. So I don't recommend consuming them. Your potions will do more for you that way. But they're just really nice to hold on to and look at, look at and examine up close. So here's the masks of Dova Sonak. And this adds a whole bunch of better uh, dragon masks with more detail to the game, which are more aesthetically pleasing. Here's some narrative loot. Now this narrative loot, uh, it includes paintings and a lot of kind of uh, dishes from all over the realm and all kinds of distinct art and uh, antiques to find to the chests. Here's dynamic dungeon loot, and it brings um, a lot more variety as well, and some rarity, rare items, and, uh, and make sure that you get some exotic items and um, enjoy things that will uh, complement the magical world more. So here's get seriously overstocked and rich merchants and this allows us to um, get all kinds of interesting um, uh, uh, stuff from merchants and make sure that they have enough money to pay us and that we can pay them and I know this is all made redundant by the fact we have money but you know Anyway, uh, it, it hopefully will give us cool um, stuff, but I, I like their other tweaks and themes and rewards, especially those superior treasure and rewards, um, the, uh, let's see, um, and hunters of unusual and new trophies, that looks good too. So those are some I would like to get. Now, here's some immersive cheats done by the same people. Um, and I, I kind of think this is interesting. You're getting Magic Lunar Forge. Uh, and some interesting uh, tusks you can loot for Mammoth Skulls. Um, so some a magic candle, uh, more enchanting and alchemy tables, free bedrolls, um, fires that really burn, wood piles you can get wood from, uh, loot in crates, more treasure in urns. So it's, it's just more of the same, but it makes it a little more fun to go scavenging through things. Um, here's some free crafting. So some stuff you can just make and you don't even need to have anything on you. You can just get to a, a crafting area and, and craft some materials. Um, Limitless Enchantments Plus, I'm really enjoying this because you can put multiple enchantments on an item and uh, also wear multiple pieces of jewelry at the same time and have those enchantments going for you also. So I'm very happy um, with that one. Seem a time saver. This helps you uh, 
it, it gives you three small chests that help you harvest items for crafting and uh, a round white room to start off with. Some radiant unique potions and poisons. This makes your, your chemical potions look really nice. Here's some scarred them's rare ingredients so you can find some kind of rare alchemy stuff in uh, solitude. Better skooma and recipes so you can make lots of different kinds of skooma to trade. Uh, Hearthfire multiple adoptions so you can have up to six children. Imperious races of Skyrim. Um, allow you, dis and no matter what uh, race you choose at the beginning of the game, you have some really cool bonus effects with that race and uh, abilities, which you'll notice uh, on your character. Um, so it makes the different characters more distinct um, from each other. Now, the double beds are for two people. There are a lot of double beds in the game, and this video, uh, this mod allows you to uh, ask somebody in the game, anyone uh, within reason who's an eligible, marriageable partner to share the double bed. Um, this is the kids are all right which allows you to uh, replace some of the looks of the children so they look more realistic and they behave kind of um, more uh, tolerably if you're into adopting kids and uh, you know enjoying them and want them to enjoy their lives and say friendly things in the game um, and not be really neurotic and annoying I would recommend the kids are all right. Um, then there's the good Serrano. We'll see how this plays out, but it apparently, um, there's other mods in the series, the good wife, the good Eric, the good followers, and the good steward. And all of these allow you to um, have more selection in terms of character that you have around. And um, this, in this case, Serana the Vampire, um, she befriends you, hopefully, and she's like a more positive vampire. <laughs> more uplifting, or okay to have around, or not as weird, um, or creepy, I guess, uh, gothic. Um, not as intent on forcing you in between her and her father, who's a dragon vampire lord. I only got there once in the game and I ended up turning into this vampire lord and gargoyle thing and I don't know, that's where it ended for me, but it was really weird. Okay, um, Royal Family Cats 3 Khajiit. Uh, this is a family of three Khajiiti cats who we're going to meet up with and they're going to become our NPCs. There's two males and one female and they're all pretty cool to have around. Then there's Sophia, the funny, fully voiced follower. And so I wanted to know what they meant by funny. And what they mean is she speaks with a Long Island Yiddish accent. I'm not kidding. And she's pretty adorable. So then there's Cecia, a follower, or Cecia. And we're going to go meet up with Cecia pretty soon, but I haven't been there yet. And she's hanging out at the tavern in Markarth. Um, and we'll, we'll see what she has to say. So um, there's also this Kijiti child named Maisha. And I've had her loaded on here for quite a while, but I can't find her. And she's in the crab shack waiting for me to adopt her. So... I'm going to leave a spot just for her. Then there is my little kitty, Maraka uh, Khajiit. And he's pretty nice. I really enjoy his personality. He's a delightful kid to adopt as a son. And he can be found at the orphanage in Ripton. Um, then there's the Argonian Hatchlings. 
they are children of the Argonian dock workers who work at Winterhelm. Um, and so, or Windhelm, excuse me, Windhelm, and those uh, Argonian hatchlings will sell you things, apparently. I don't know much about Argonians um, at the Windhelm docks, but they, they um, have some children now, and those children mer are merchants. So, we also have Khajiit Caravan Kittens. Uh, they are Khajiit children that travel with the Khajiit caravans, and they sell stuff for the Khajiits. And they only sell children appropriate type stuff and regular Khajiit items for the most part, excepting certain things which you can now find in the underground world, such as Skuma. Okay, so there's convenient horses. And this is really fun because it lets you get all kinds of neat uh, armor updates for your horse throughout the game, depending on how much you've succeeded at something. And it lets you train your horse, and your horse can harvest ingredients, and there's just a lot of stuff with this. But make sure you have 500 gold because you're going to need it when you pick up your horse and it wants you to train him and get your first pile of gear and then you're all set and it'll also take care of your followers horses and everybody will be happy on their horseback and you don't need to use coconuts like Monty Python right around the wilderness with no horses. It will also suggest that you your followers can pay a thousand gold to get their own horses um, and you can also um, find some like five horses by uh, the mill in Riverwood uh, as part of another part of a mod here. Um, anyways, continuing on, here's Unique Frost, Shadowmere, and Arvac. And these are all award horses which you attain in the game at a certain level in the quests. I have not attained any of these horses yet. However, when I do, these are super cool versions of them that are aesthetically pleasing and apparently do cool stuff too. So we'll see how that goes. Here's Star, Spell Sword, a superior thingamabob, a tweak. So, Anyway, uh, what's neat is that it kind of improves what you find uh, based around the fact that you're a spell sword. So you get some cool enchanted weapons, you get some cool scrolls, you got your basic uh, cool robes. Yeah, you're a wizard, but you can also pick up a weapon when you need to. So I, I like that combo and we're definitely going to exploit this character building mods. Um, the Parthenax Dilemma, at one point the dragons start talking to you and you kind of bond with one of them and then it, there's like some people and they want you to kill the one that you bonded with. I'm not into that, so we have this so that things can be friendly between us and the dragon. Live and let live. So then we have instant shouts for you, but not the dragger. So, yeah, we don't need a lot of druggers shouting at us, and also, it's a drag to go through too much high Hrothgar Greybeard training every time, so this instant shouts kind of helps. Anybody who knows the game will know you need dragon souls to activate shouts, but um, at least you can trim the process of activating those shouts a little bit with this. Boethia for good guys. Apparently Boethia is somebody who, in the game world, wants you to sell their so your soul to them for eternity for something. Just to avoid this whole dramatic thing with the selling of the soul to some dark entity in a fucking video game, pardon my language, um, then we're just going to bypass Boethia here.
Um, Stormcloaks for good guys. Stormcloaks for good guys allows them to be less racist. Um, so they're not all clannish and cliquish, and they kind of do offer an alternative to joining the Imperial Legion. And I guess at one point in the game, everything centers around the Civil War. I really haven't gotten there too much, but um, you can join legions. And Stormcloaks, they don't like a lot of characters that I like to play, like elves and Khajiit and a bunch of other things. And so by having this, they're a little more open-minded to letting my characters join in without too much verbal abuse. Then there's <clears throat> the Clan of Hidden Valley. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm really kind of looking forward to it. And I'm very curious about it. And I think we should move it down to the bottom because I've had a number of uh, issues trying to play this one. Now, we've got, I'm just going to, help out with our load situation. This one needs to go up to wardrobe a little bit. But at least you guys get a feeling for how I arrange my mods. Because you're actually getting to see me do it, that's why. So... And you probably hear the trains in the background at the train station. So, American trains of the West. All right, we got more more patches for our awesome artifacts here. We're trying to to make a stable game. Excuse me while I get slightly distracted, just an eensy teensy bit here, and uh, arrange this stuff. I hope you don't mind. But, you know, anyways, it'll just pause our little tiny walkthrough here. Which is not really very little or tiny. Okay, so we're back. Here is Thane of Skyrim. Now, uh, this lets you do all kinds of stuff. In particular, the important part is hopefully we won't end up in prison in Markarth or anywhere else in the game the whole time because the guards will look, know to look the other way. It also allows you to gain thaneship and notoriety and all of the holes because I like that. Now, Skyrim with Reputation, this allows you to talk to Erikur in the blue palace in solitude and pay him a bunch of money and make you famous or rich or whatever in the kingdom so people treat you nicer he also you can also pay him and make your reputation terrible and make people fear you if you want to be a notorious criminal of the claim in the game but i'm just not into that So we have Stones of Baron Zaya Underground. This allows you to go through a trapdoor in Ripton and suddenly have access to all 25 Stones of Baron Zaya so you can take it to someone in the Thieves Guild and they will make you a crown of Baron Zaya that possesses magical powers. Otherwise you have to collect the Stones of Baron Zaya wherever they may be found all over the kingdom with no map. You just have to get lucky. So I'm, I'm kind of cool with the underground version. And you still get to collect all of them. So uh, northern bathhouses. If you like hot tubs or saunas and you think they should be in all places and all homes and all everywhere all over the planet, then this is the mod for you. This instantly turns the best part of Scandinavia into a Skyrim modded friendly thing. And also those herbs and stuff that they hang in the saunas, that's actually like a finished thing. They use birch leaves 
and uh, like beat themselves with birch leaves and hang them around and they smell up the steam and it's a there's a whole thing and also you know you get really hot in the sauna with the leaves and then you jump into the snow and then you jump back into the sauna or you jump into a hot tub anyway you won't believe the number of mod reviewers I've heard who have said what are they, what's with the elder whatever leaves in the saunas? Why do they have these things around the saunas? And it's like, well, for the rest of the planet, it's pretty obvious. All right. Um, but uh, I love the hot tubs. I love the pools. I love the saunas. Northern bathhouses does all of this and more. Um, so here's Juniper's Dawn Star Shit Sanctuary. And what this does is that when you join Dawnstar and the Dark Brotherhood and all of that, eventually you end up with the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. But you get the Dawnstar Sanctuary and then you get to, like, all fix it up and make it super cool and run the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary however you want. So that's kind of nice. Good location right there by a museum. I mean, I'm down with that. All right. Here's the <clears throat> Better Gray Quarter. And Better Gray Quarter is um, the uh, interesting little um, like district that's in uh, Windhelm. And uh, it uh has a lot of dark elves and uh wood elves um and basically um they're kind of subjugated in the game by a lot of the storm cloaks and this kind of livens up their section and makes it a little more exotic and interesting from uh this you know not so scandinavian feeling <laughs> more more um, a strange Chinatown <laughs> or something from an American city or an Italian village, a little Italy or, uh, you know, uh, little Havana, you know, any of the ethnic neighborhoods from any of the American cities uh, that uh, back in, in Europe would be, would be called perhaps ghetto, a ghetto. In the, in, in the finest sense of the ethnic term, uh, multicultural term. So this, this makes the underground elven culture a little more dynamic and, and colorful and uh, present in the strongly Scandinavian dominated Nordic world of Skyrim. Um, so White Run Underground Lair uh, this gives you a nifty passage to a cool underground lair that's kind of similar to Riften, only a little more welcoming. And uh, it's, uh, you know, part of the subculture denizens of Skyrim. Here's Lakeview Avant Garden, and it allows you to have multiple greenhouses and a pool and a bunch of stuff. And uh, at Lakeview Estate, um, and some guards and some walls and some cool stuff. Winstad Pool. Uh, Winstad is right across from Solstheim and um, it's got a nice ocean view and this gives it cool fishing facilities and more hot tubs and pools and greenhouses. But uh, also uh, archery range and some nice perks. Uh, here is the Hearthfire Cellar extension, and this is really nice because it gives uh, plenty of room for beds, uh, has a library. If you have any vampire followers, they've got a coffin room that's hidden. There's a bunch of stuff that you don't have to worry about building in your usual Lakeview home or Hearthfire home because this cellar extension already has that stuff, so that frees up your choices to choose what you want to add to your hearth fire. Um, makes your decisions easier. Here's Breeze Home TNF Beds Plus, 
And uh, there's TNF Feds, and then there's TNF Feds Plus, and that seems to be the updated version. Anyway, this turns all of the homes in the game into six children homes with pretty nice clutter. So nobody's crowded. You will notice I don't have quite all the homes. It's because there are some other mods for those cities and I don't want them to conflict. Here's Castle Volkahar rebuilt and Castle Volkahar retextured. And uh, these are, um, this is the vampire castle that you eventually encounter off the coast of uh, Solitude, the island. So um, anyway, uh, I really like the castle and I don't know if Serana is going to be living there or what. I hope that I'm not a vampire at any point in the game. If I can get out of it, I will. There are ways to get out of it once you are one. But we'll see what the good Serana has to do with the new castle. Um, here's Ravenstone Castle and by Clefjay and Ravenstone is um, also off the coast of uh, on Solstein, the island, and it's off the coast on its own island. I'm not sure if I really understand everything about this home yet. I've, I've noticed some things. Um, and I wish that I could dress it up or improve it in some way, like, like clean it up. There, there's something about it. I liked Legend of Eagle's Nest very much, and I wish that Ravenstone Castle were closer to Legend of Eagle's Nest than, uh, Ravenstone, because it's a little run down. But I've added some other things to the Solstheim Island, and hopefully that'll make up for it. Here's the Alchemist's Basement. And uh, so, um, it's a cave. Um, it's kind of an interesting, colorful home. Um, and it's next to the doorway of the Alchemist Shack. And so it, it adds uh, more character to the Alchemist Shack. Halls of Dovendor. Now, this is a special Dovahkiin home. We'll go check it out. Uh, it says it has hours of explora 